formally open the May 14th meeting of the Concord Middle School Building Committee. Uh, today we have a number of things to do. We have a little housekeeping to do first in terms of meeting minutes, and, and then we have a number of items on the agenda. Before we start, I want to, uh, I would like a motion to change the agenda just a bit. I want to move up the COVID-19 pandemic and project impact uh, to just after the meeting minutes, okay? So if I can have a motion to do that. Hi, Tim, I'm sorry. Do you mind if we uh, do a roll call vote for attendance? All right. You want me to do that or you want to? You know? If you uh, just look at your screen. Um... Yeah, I will go through the people, okay? Uh, so if, if, for those in attendance, say, uh, say here. Stephen Crane? Here. Jared Stanton? Here. Susan Bates? Here. Lori Hunter? Here. Justin Cameron? Here. John Harris? Here. Russ Hughes? Pat Nelson? Here. Kate Hanley. Here. Court Booth. Here. Heather Bout. Here. Frank Cannon. I saw Frank. Uh, Chris Popoff. Here. Charlie Parker. Here. Matt Root. Here. Uh, I am here. Tim Holt. Don Guerrillo. Here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so to uh, to go back, we'll do the we'll do some minutes first, and then uh, right after that, I want to go to the agenda item of uh, COVID-19 pandemic and project impact. Uh, so I want to rearrange the agenda there. Can I hear a motion to to change the agenda to take up the COVID-19 pandemic and project impacts uh, directly after the minutes? So moved, Court Booth. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, is it all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Uh, with that, uh, we have minutes have been distributed <coughs> for our last meeting, which was the meeting of 4.30.20. Uh, and uh, I would like, are there any changes or additions to those minutes? Tim, this is Kate. Um, yep. I, I was there, but I wasn't listed as present. Okay. Slowly noted, we'll change that. Uh, anything else? Tim, this, this is Matt. In one section, it, it notes net zero energy as a goal for the sustainability subcommittee. And I'd suggest that that's a goal for the whole project as noted by the amendment for the funding for, for our effort right now. Okay, we'll make that change. Anything else? All right, we'll have a roll call vote to accept those minutes. Uh, Stephen Crane? Aye. Jared Stanton? <coughs> yep. Susan Bates? Aye. Larry Hunter? Yes. Justin Cameron? Yes. John Harris? Yes. Russ Hughes? Pat Nelson? Yes. Kate Hanley? Yes. Court Booth? Yes. Heather Bout? Yes. Frank Cannon? Chris Popoff? Yes. Charlie Parker? Yes. Matt Root? Yes. Uh, I say yes. Don Guerrillo? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I, I know we have a series of sustainability minutes here. I'm gonna turn it over to Matt to make sure that, I think two of those have been approved by his committee uh, and I want to, I don't know about the status of the other two. So Matt, can you handle the sustainability minutes section here? Yes, you're correct, Tim. So the subcommittee approved the minutes for 1.30 and 2.6 back on our meeting on uh, <coughs> April 29th. So I don't think we need to do those. The, uh, I'd like uh, a motion to approve both, or I guess I'll open up to the five members of the committee. Are there any corrections to the minutes on 424 or 429? Uh, based on the minutes Charlie sent out, Charlie developed and I, and I sent out two days ago. 
Okay, uh, hearing no, no corrections, uh, may I get a motion to approve the 424 and 429 minutes together? So moved. Thank you, Kate. May I have a second? Charlie, can I get a second? Yes, I second that motion. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. All right. Uh, all those in favor of the five members of the committee approving the 424 and 429 sustainability subcommittee minutes. Uh, Kate Hanley? Yes. Charlie Parker? Yes. Frank? I'm not sure Frank's on. And I don't think Russ, Russ, are you on? Sure. All right, this is Matt. Russ, I will Russ is that. on. He's just having some audio issues. Okay. Uh, well, I think that this is Matt. I, I'll I'll be the third, and I think quorum quorum vote to approve the minutes. Thank you, Tim. Okay, I think that with that, I think we're current on all of our meeting 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 minutes from both subcommittees and the uh, building committee, which is which is a good achievement for our group. Thank you all for uh, for doing that. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to move up the agenda item related to COVID-19 pandemic and project impact. Um, I'll give a little, uh, I'll, I'll talk to it a little bit here. Uh, for about a month, Don <laughs> and I have been talking about uh, the, some issues related, issues related to the pandemic that uh, are causing our project to have a fairly difficult time um, and those are, uh, specifically, there are three areas that are of concern. One is, is uh, fairly obvious. It is, it is difficult to move a project of this size along with multiple entities, uh, two partners and uh, 17 committee members uh, to just get what we have to get done. And I think we all realize that. And I really congratulate everybody that we've been working very diligently and well to try to do that through our Zoom meetings and various interactions that we have online. But it's not a <laughs> process. It's, 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 we, we're working very hard to continue to make progress on the project. Secondarily, we're reaching a time with the project where we need uh, robust public involvement with the project in terms of some key decisions that we're making. And I think you all know what those are. Uh, those are, you know, having the public understand uh, the aggressive sustainability process that we're undertaking. Uh, and then there are issues with certain spaces in the building, i.e. the gymnasium in terms of there is a significant professed uh, desire for significantly larger spaces in the gymnasium and also the auditorium where there has been significant expression uh, that we would like that the public many parts of the public would like significantly larger auditorium space and right now it's almost in, impossible to get good two-way public <coughs> input related to those as well as in the state of emergency that we have with the town and the way meetings are being handled as only an emergency basis, it's also extremely difficult to get broader involvement from other committees relating to uh, issues such as this, planning issues such as this. Uh, in addition, uh, I think uh, we, are all, we are increasingly aware that the, uh, the pandemic is gonna have severe economic uh, consequences for virtually all levels of government, including our state, which is projecting significant budget deficits and uh, the issues related to the town's ability to fulfill the services that are expected by the citizens. So we don't, there's, there's, there's obviously great ambiguity about this, but we know that there's gonna be pressure on all levels of government. Uh, so in thinking about putting this expenditure in front of the town in the fall, Whereas we don't know what the economic climate is going to be, uh, we can expect that economics are gonna be front and center in terms of uh, primary concern to both our citizens and the town government. Um, so with all of that, uh, when we were thinking about that, we sort of extended this discussion and we, we spoke uh, and conferred with the chairman of the select board, chairman of the finance committee, chairman of the school committee and the town manager 
and talked about uh, what we could or should do. And those discussions were, were, were I think, good for all. We, we explored the uh, situation from many viewpoints. So the net of it is that what we are doing, what we are suggesting, the management, Lori, Don, and I, hmm. are suggesting to the committee uh, that we take a pause after we complete the feasibility phase uh, the, of our project, which is we're right at that point right now. Uh, and I have a, I've prepared a motion uh, that I would like the committee to consider this morning. And I will read that motion uh, right now. I think we have it up on the screen. I move that the Concord Middle School Building Committee enter into a pause in our proceedings upon the production of a preliminary feasibility report prior to proceeding with the schematic design phase of the project. Such intent will be communicated, will be communicated to the Concord Select Board. The preliminary feasibility report will include, among other things, a cost analysis of our preferred design, reflecting where the estimated cost stand does of the pause relating to the base building, an aggressive sustainability approach, and potential options for the gymnasium and potential auditorium. Once the preliminary feasibility report is completed and accepted, all formal activities of the committee will be suspended until a determination is made to resume activities. We believe the need for this pause was necessitated by the severe health and financial effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The effects of the pandemic have significantly hampered the committee's ability to garner the robust public input necessary to make several crucial decisions relating to the project. In addition, uncertainty relating to the potential financial effects of the pandemic have called into question the potential timing of the design and construction project funding request to the town. During the pause, the committees, the CMSBC's co-chairpersons and the superintendent of schools will on a monthly basis review the potential of restarting the project, conferring with other town officials as necessary. When the conditions warrant, intent to restart the project will be communicated to the Concord Select Board. So I'm putting that motion on the table and I would ask for a second. 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 Okay, thank you very much. So I have spoken to it uh, and I would like to, be, I would like to, I, I we're gonna have uh, any questions or general uh, uh, comments, but I would, First, like to have my co-chair Don speak, and then Lori uh, uh, relating to this motion. So, so, so Don, you want to you want to uh, comment? Sure. Uh, I just want to let everyone know that you know a lot of thought was put into this, and we all agree that you know, given the times and the circumstances, it's really difficult to get the public feedback and the. You know, face to face conversations and buy in that we believe that we're going to need from the community. Uh, it's really critical that we have support for this. It's such a large project, and we want uh, everyone to understand the process and to not feel like we've uh, gone about this in a way that hasn't been inclusive to the community. So, uh, we, as tough as a decision as it was, we feel like this is the best thing right now, given where we are in the project. And, you know, I kept saying, if we were farther along and already passed the ballot and the town meeting vote, um, you know, things would be quite different. We could continue on. But this is such a critical time to have input both on the design and on the uh, amenities, if you will, the community amenities and the overall project that it's really critical that we get uh, community buy-in. So, for all those reasons, you know, this, no one would have expected a year ago that we'd be in this position. We would be full steam ahead, right? But um, just given the circumstances, we feel like this is the best thing to do right now. Great, thank you, Don. Laura, you wanna, you wanna sure. say a few words? Yeah. You know, I think it just become apparent as the last couple of months have evolved here and are clearly there's no quick end in sight, um, you know, we've just postponed town meeting until September. So everything's getting delayed and timelines are shifting. So obviously 
the hope we might have had for a fall special town meeting or even on the presidential ballot, all of those items we were so actively debating um, were apparent quickly becoming null and void. So knowing all of that and the fact that we just don't know the fiscal situation, Jared and I are going to get off this and try to listen in to some guidance from our professional organizations on how to even you know, re edit the budget we had before all this started. So when you, it just becomes fairly clear that this needs to, to slow down, um, both for all the input reasons that Tim and Don mentioned, which are really important to us, and just because of so much uncertainty, um, to not acknowledge all of that and try to plow ahead, I think just doesn't make sense. So this feels like the right decision. Um, and I think in the big picture, we won't regret it at all. It'll help this project come out probably more successfully than if we tried to keep going. And I don't know about you. I mean, I'm on Zoom all day long and there are some things you can do fairly effectively, but there's a lot of things that just are not the same. And I think this project is probably top of my list of challenges, <laughs> which is saying something um, in terms of productivity and how the communication's been and all of that. So not for lack of trying, I think we've done some great things, but just really making it feel solid has been really challenging. Thank you, Laurie. Uh, the one thing I would add before I allow or uh, uh, ask for other comments or questions, I think questions are probably the best. Uh, I just, I, I've had the opportunity to talk to each one of you about this and, uh, uh, virtually each one of you, and uh, I want to emphasize the commitment that came from those conversations of every person on the team to the Concord Middle School and getting a new great school built for the kids. Uh, uh, I think we all share that. And one of the, okay, there it goes. Don't speak. One of the difficult parts of this is that that's going to be delayed by some amount of time uh, because we really need the school. I think everyone is committed to the concept that we have of combining the two schools that we have now, now on the sandboard tonight and getting on with it. So it's a difficult decision. I wanna thank everybody for the incredible work and the diligence they've shown to get us to this point, which will be completion of feasibility phase. So with that, I want to take any questions that anyone on the committee might have relating to this potential decision. So I'll open Tim, it up. Yes. Tim, it's Stephen. Can I, can I talk for a minute about the, the, please uh, do. the town's, please. Uh, about the town's finances? To uh, put, please do. Please do. So, um, so as I think most of you know, May 1st was the end of the, of the fourth quarter or was the, de the deadline for payment of taxes of the fourth quarter uh, of FY 20. And, um, so uh, the data would show that uh, the collection rates were consistent with prior years, uh, both on the personal property and real estate property taxes side. Uh, but uh, our CFO, Kerry LaFleur and I, and, and John Harris was a, was a big part of preparing uh, a lot of our analysis. We've, we've um, looked at some budget projections. Uh, local receipts are obviously way off. Uh, and we don't know about state aid, but we're looking at potentially 25 to 30 percent reduction in this in in aspects of state aid. As you know, there's state aid that's specific to schools, Chapter 70, and then there's what's called UGGA, un, unrestricted general government aid. So um, we are actively monitoring that. I will tell you that we probably aren't going to know the state budget numbers till uh, I think if, if we get them by the end of June, I would consider that to be lucky. Uh, and I think internally, we feel like the September 1st collections will tell us much more about the ongoing impact of the pandemic in, in Concord than the May receipts because, you know, it just, it just started for many of us. Uh, we've been in discussions with the business community through their associations as well as the Economic Vitality Committee. There is legitimate concern uh, based on a survey that uh, a group called Concord Together did that a, a significant number of businesses may not reopen at all. And what impact is that going to have on, like I said, local receipts or in their local economy? So uh, all of this is to say that um, I do think 
based on the data, the, the financial data, a pause is wholly appropriate. But I also want to um, convey that if property tax collections continue to stay strong and Concord is able to weather this, then, uh, and we're able to see that this coming fall, that we shouldn't hesitate to resume our work because this is an important needed project. And, you know, th there is a tomorrow after all of this and, 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 if, and Concord's gonna be here and we're gonna continue to edu educate our, our children and uh, a new middle school is gonna be required to do that. So uh, I just wanted to add the, the financial status and data to the mix of the conversation, but I am full support of the motion. Thank you, Stephen. I, I just one uh, addition to those comments. I believe, and I think it's generally believed that public, large public uh, building projects like this are critical to the recovery of the economy. Okay, these are these are some of the things that you really want to do. Um, so uh, I think when we get through this, see where we are. There's every intent to restart, put this before the town, because this is exactly the kind of thing you want to do in terms of, of, of stimulation of the economy to move things forward. So uh, any other comments or questions from committee members? I can, can I jump in? This is Heather. Please do. <laughs> um, thanks. So it, it probably doesn't even need to be said that I wholeheartedly agree with um, Hugh and Stephen about the fact that this is absolutely still a commitment and it's gonna be needed no matter what for the, for the kids. Um, I just wanted to clarify and, and also thank you for reaching out to me in advance. Um, uh, as you said, as the chair of the school committee, I just wanted to clarify, this is not something that the school committee has discussed and expressed a committee opinion on. Um, obviously we didn't wanna discuss that at a public school committee meeting before it was discussed here. So uh, Tim did reach out to me and just asked my personal opinion as chair. Um, and I wholeheartedly agree with this. Um, also in the role of communications, uh, I think as we'd mentioned before, Pat and I had gone through kind of a, I guess a, a, a tentative plan of what we, what communications could look like if we were to try to keep pushing this forward. Um, and we did come up with what we could do with Zoom calls and public input that in, away and everything. Uh, but also, as the chair of the sub communications subcommittee, my opinion was also strongly that we're much better off taking this pause and continuing later when we can do it the right way. Because I feel like that public input is completely critical to doing this the right way and getting town support. So totally in agreement, just wanted to clarify those things. And I, 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 I've asked the communications uh, committee to put together a uh, public statement, okay, uh, which Heather and Pat have done well with, and uh, we'll get that around to everybody after after the meeting. We'll get it uh, transferred to you, okay. Any other questions or comments, please? Uh, Tim, this is Court, if I might. Um, sure. You know that the design committee had uh, some conversations, not in a meeting, but rather I reached out to design subcommittee and we uh, heard from them independently individually with no consultation uh, but there there was uh, a theme that emerged um, around priorities that uh, we want not forgotten uh, as we pause uh, no surprises they reflect the priorities this committee has discussed and put in writing as to what a good new middle school constitutes uh, in addition to that, there was some sentiment that uh, our work is not done and we as a subcommittee uh, couldn't, couldn't work effectively. Uh, as you said for the larger committee, we certainly agree we couldn't work effectively and discuss and debate and uh, learn about the things we wanted to uh, probe. Uh, so speaking personally, not for the subcommittee, uh, not only am I fully in favor, but I think uh, uh, some key uh, terminology here is that this uh, uh, reflects a pause at the stage of preliminary feasibility report because design, design subcommittee, I believe among other subgroups have, have work to do when we pick this up before we uh, promptly move to schematic. 
So I'd like to go on the record as such. Okay. Thank All right. You. Any others? You know, please feel free to comment. This is. A well, I, I have a, I have a couple of questions yeah. here. This is Charlie. Sure. You know, we say preliminary. What what do we really mean when we say preliminary feasibility report? Does that mean that there will also be a final feasibility report? That would be question number one. Question number two uh, is related to the process by which we uh, review, accept, and so forth the preliminary feasibility report. Is it just, you know, given to the chair of the committee and that's done or do we have another meeting? I mean, well, what is the process for, you know, uh, taking what the language in this motion forward to acceptance of that, of that preliminary report? Okay, a couple of things there. Uh, one, uh, preliminary report, uh, uh, obviously we have not made certain decisions related to key attributes of the project. Uh, the gymnasium, the auditorium, and you know more specific issues about the aggressive sustainability that we're going to embed into the project, which I think we're committed to as a, as a, as a committee, but we haven't made the final decisions on those. So we say preliminary because Normally, when you go into schematic, schematic design, you have a preferred option with the cost estimate, with the integrated approach to the way that the functionality would work in that building, okay? That's normally what comes out of feasibility, and then you refine all of that, obviously, in schematic design. Because we have not completed those decisions on those things, that's why we're calling it our feasibility report. So. What we want to do is capture all of the information that we have to date and get it recorded in a report. So when we restart, we're in a position to have public input, make those decisions and move on with schematic design. So that's why we call it preliminary. In terms of the specifics, uh, after the second part of this meeting, we're going to have uh, Kristen comment on the report and what she believes the elements are that are necessary to complete in the next couple of weeks in order to get us to a preliminary report. Okay, so we'll hear from her later on in this meeting about what those items are. Uh, my view of it right now, and we'll have a chance to talk about this, I think her intent is to produce a draft of that report in approximately two weeks, in the, in the, uh, somewhere in the late week in May. That will be distributed to everybody. Everybody will have a chance to make comment on that. Uh, and then we, we haven't, I don't have a, a decision yet, but there could be a meeting where we get together to approve that report at the end of that, having taken into account people's comments and made appropriate changes. Um, so that's sort of a top line on that to, to, to answer your question. And we'll get into that a little bit deeper in the second section of the meeting. Thank you, that was very clear. Okay, any other, any other comments? This is, uh, this is, is any, if anyone has concerns, please raise them. Uh, I know I, we work through a lot of concerns. We work through momentum concerns. We talked about cost with the construction cost. What impact would this have? That's really hard to say. You know, it's, uh, there's some notion that it would be cheaper be, uh, if we move faster because there'll be a, a, a significant demand for uh, a significant need by the construction companies to get moving. On the other hand, some say there's going to be pent up demand and they're going to be busy, okay? Uh, there are also significant issues that are unresolved right now relating, there are, we got a report from our, one of our partners that there are of the 15 or 16 major categories of suppliers for building projects, right now seven, I think it was either seven or eight of them are in some significant stay, uh, state of disruption relating to supplies, okay? So the whole the bigger effects of not only the pandemic, but other things are having a, a significant effect on global supply change, which is affecting building products. So that issue is multivariate, okay? And it's hard to know, we'll get more, we certainly will get more information as we go through. So that's just some things on cost. Are there any, any other comments, questions? Um, Tim, I'll just, uh echo sure. that I'm, as a member of the communication committee um, and a member of this committee, I'm in full support of this. And I, and I just want to say that if, 
if what we're truly concerned about is, is having um, sufficient input from the community to make these decisions about um, the, the gym, the auditorium, the, the add-ons to the, to the project, then almost nothing else matters. That's what we have to wait and do. Um, so I'm very comfortable with that's what we have to wait and do. Um, and I, you know, also taking into consideration Stephen's comments about the town's finances. Um, but uh, I think that it will be questions from the community that the communications committee is gonna need to be ready to answer. Things like the impact on the maintenance of the existing schools, what those costs might be, when this might happen. There are gonna be lots of questions from the com community and we need to be prepared to, to, to respond in some way. Yeah. Yeah, just, just on that, once we suspend our activities, we cannot formally meet to make decisions, right? Okay, or, or debate decisions. That doesn't preclude individuals from having discussions with people about public documents. So, so each of us, I, I am, I'm certain each of us will have significant discussions with people relating to this decision, where we stand and what is in the public documents particularly the feasibility report that is issued. So those, that's okay to do. It's just we, we cannot confer and make decisions when we have suspended our activities. Any other, any other comments? Okay, uh, with that, uh, I'm going to ask for a roll call vote on this. Uh, um, so I'll go through the, I'll go through the committee. Stephen Crane? Yes. Jared Stanton? Yes. Susan Bates? Yes. Lori Hunter? Yes. Justin Cameron? Yes. John Harris? Yes. Russ Hughes? Yes. Pat Nelson? Yes. Kate Hanley? Yes. Court Booth? Yes. Heather Bout? Yes. Frank Cannon? Chris Papa? Yes. Yes. Frank Cannon, yes. All right, Frank, you got in there. Okay. Uh, and I think uh, Chris said yes also. Yes. Charlie, Charlie Parker? Yes. Matt Root? Yes. Uh, I say yes. Don? Yes. All right. Thank you all very much. That's a it's a difficult vote to take. I know that I, it is for me. I, I, you know, as after, after whatever it is now, seven months, I'm more convinced than ever of having looked at detail of the schools that we have right now and the challenges that they're faced by our staff. And uh, I'm more committed than ever than we need a, a new school, a new great new school for these kids. And I'm also as excited as I've ever been about the potential of that school. I haven't seen any other schools and haven't gone through the process of uh, preliminary process of design and see what we can do and what that's going to mean in terms of the education for these kids. So it's a hard vote, but uh, we'll be looking at this every month and hopefully sooner than later we'll be back uh, meeting and moving the project along through schematic design. Um, okay, as I said, uh, the, the next part of the meeting I want to I want to focus on what we will need to do in the next couple of weeks to get the feasibility study, preliminary feasibility study completed. So I'm going to ask Kristen to sort of outline where we are right now and uh, what those things are that are necessary for us to complete in the next couple of weeks. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, so we already have a substantial amount of the uh, draft report uh, pulled together. The feasibility study report typically includes um, your summary introduction. It includes an evaluation of your existing site conditions, which are, is a collection of what we discovered through the geotechnical in, uh, investigations, the wetlands um, survey, the, the professional survey, and so on. So there's going to be a section that reflects our findings from that, as well as all of the supporting materials for that. Uh, the next portion of the feasibility report typically includes a the high level evaluation of the 
alternatives that were reviewed. We started with five, as you all know, and quickly the, the fifth kind of converged into one of, um, one of the four. So there'll be a narrative around each of those uh, four concepts from the architectural insight teams about what each of those four concepts conveyed. And it's a very, um, let me say, objective narrative about what, what the differentiators were and, and the major organizational elements, and as well as the graphics that you've all been seeing to date. Uh, the, after that, you come to a section that is the uh, preferred alternative. Um, typically, at the conclusion of a feasibility study, you would write that around all of the conclusions that were made and all of the decisions that are made uh, during the feasibility st study process. Um, we know that uh, concept three was officially selected by the committee. And so that preferred alternative will document uh, the next level of uh, alternative three or concept three, which had those uh, revisions that you and Cole um, made to the uh, classroom section and the rotation and so on. So that preferred alternative will be a slightly deeper dive into uh, concept three. We also have a section that will document the uh, sustainability uh, discussion and all of the enhanced options and what they mean, as well as all of the materials that we've presented and shared with you on in, um, passive house and net zero readiness. Um, so the feasibility report really for the most part serves as a uh, as documentation of the process and all of the information that's been provided to date. Uh, the one nuance to this preliminary report is that there will not be a conclusion on the enhanced sustainability items or those building options that we had discussed, such as the auditorium and the gymnasium. So the report will uh, wrap up with those as documented with all of the information that we need as a launching point or that you may need in your community outreach. Um, as background. So, but it will not be making a determination on those. It will, in the summary and introduction, note that that, that investigation and decision is still required. Um, actually, another critical part that I, uh, that is earlier on in the report that you'll see is all of the conversations around educational visioning and planning. There'll be documentation of the space summary, as well as all of the um, nuances, the, the difference between the teaming approach and the junior high type approach. So all of that is documented there. Um, we understand that we are following a MSBA format. And so we will be uh, showing that MSBA space summary and there's documentation of the differences between what the MSBA space summary carries and what our project is carrying. So that will all be detailed in there again just more of the documentation that we've seen and just more of those answers to the questions that you all have been asking. Um, so all of that is going to be recorded and put forward uh, for your review. And um, the only pieces that are missing beyond those, those decisions about the building options and enhanced sustainability are two pieces of the site investigations were not able to be completed due to COVID. One is the traffic study that was not completed because you need a typical traffic day and we know we haven't seen one of those in a while. Um, and the other one is the phase one site assessment. The phase one is, uh, requires a lot of outreach and a lot of discussion with um, town offices and uh, re you know, access to town records for uh, anything about the site <coughs> history. And so uh, that's, something that usually requires full operations and contact with our consultants. So we see the phase one as being easily um, completed over the summer. So it will not be in your, your draft report or your preliminary report, but we do in intend to collect that information as soon as um, we, working with uh, Stephen and, and everyone on in the Concord side, whenever we think that we're ready to get access to all of the documentation needed, will complete that task. The traffic study will, however, not be able to be done until the fall. Um, so, because that does require normal school operations and that's assuming that we do return to normal school operations in the fall. So that's uh, a summary of what is, in, what is intended to be in the preliminary report. Um, and so with that, uh, I'd 
open the floor to questions. Uh, I'll start with a couple of things. I, I know that the, uh, as I listen to you, uh, on, in terms of the designs, I know our design team went through an effort to, to discuss and document those things about uh, uh, design uh, three that were particularly important to us in terms of what we saw of that design. I just want to make sure that that information uh, is reflected in as co as one collected, documented, and reflected in the report in some fashion. Is that possible? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Might I make a suggestion? Um, maybe the through court we can put together a document that expresses what's important about that, but then also what we might like the designers to consider moving forward into SD as far as um, changes or or studies that could be done uh, with that recognizing it's just feasibility and there's a lot of work to do in schematic design but if there are initial thoughts from the design subcommittee both what we think is positive about it and what we'd like to see further studied um, I think that would help express some of the um, thoughts from the design subcommittee I'm gonna uh, Put, put forth uh, my belief that that probably is consistent with what every member thinks, although we haven't had a meeting to to enable that discussion, Don. But uh, I, I'm guessing you you speak for uh, your subcommittee quite nicely. But I'd, I'd ask other members to weigh in. I think it makes a lot of sense. We're, what we're trying to do is bridge this properly. Right. And what I'm worried about is that if there's time in between a month, two months, three months, that yeah. we will have not documented where we, you know, believe the design to have been, you know, it's just feasibility. There's a lot of work to do and that's part of the process and that's totally normal. Um, but I think if there are thoughts that we have currently about how to, you know, um, move that design forward into schematic design, it's worth uh, noting them because we're not literally moving into SD once this report is done, we're taking a pause. So. Um, I don't want all of those thoughts and ideas to have been forgotten or displaced with time. Yeah, and, and the other thing I would add, it's self-evident to everybody, I imagine, but we're pausing, but uh, SMMA is not uh, pausing yet, hence uh, all the more reason to make sure the communication uh, around design continues with SMMA, even if the building committee has suspended operations. Is that uh, one, one, one thing on that I would add, when my, one of my concerns about this area is there are things that we really liked about that design, both educationally and, and, uh, and appearance-wise. Uh, however, and, and, and uh, you can comment on this, Don, as, as you go into schematic design, there will be other pressures. There'll be pressures, there'll be financial pressures related to that design. Can we make it, can we do it in slightly different ways in order to accommodate some financial things? We, I wanna make sure that what we like and what drew us to that design is not lost in those discussions. So the fact right. that we can document that well. Absolutely. So there's a preservation of what's great about this. We all voted for it for a reason. We believe that this is the best solution. Um, but moving into schematic design, it might be helpful for the designers to understand where the design subcommittee uh, believes that they should further study or, or look at um, as they you know, further develop the design and schematic design. I just worry that a few months from now, we're going to be like, what, what did we right. say? Or what did we, you know, what were we collectively thinking? So just as a document, and that's not to say that Sims, like, I think it's just a way, I think it's just a way to um, have our thoughts documented as a design subcommittee so that they can ponder it. And when we pick back up, it's in writing and we can say here, here's the thought behind that. Don, I think that's a great idea. We'd love to see a document from the design submit, uh, subcommittee uh, collecting all of your open thoughts that we need to pick up with. And to clarify, though, we will be going on full stop um, after the preliminary report is submitted. Right. Uh, it's, always, it's always fun to hear from Don's house because we actually hear from some of the kids who might actually be going to that middle school. <laughs> <laughs> They're like my peanut gallery. Can you be quiet? <laughs> they want to comment on the school, right? 
<laughs> That's right. Although they do see my plans and my drawings and they get yeah. super interested in some of the work. So they're, they're paying attention. <laughs> okay. um, on a similar yeah. fashion, and I'll ask Matt to comment on this, in terms of sustainability, we've, uh, Matt, you've done some work in documenting uh, and creating a document that creates a, a sort of a narrative related to how the school might work and function and what the key important principles are that we're documenting. I want to make sure that work gets ingra in, ingrained into the sustainability section of the document also. Is that, is that fair, Kristen? Yes, yes, we'll, uh, we'll be reflecting all of the work today as well as all the conversations and, and any conclusions that have been reached will be represented as well as the sustainability subcommittee's um, document Cause, forwarded. Because that, uh, sometimes when you get into sustainability, it becomes a list of items and list of numbers and stuff. What, what I, what I think is good about what Matt just done is there's this, a narrative of what the school will sort of look like and how it works in terms of energy. So I just want to make sure that we get, we get that documentation into, uh, into the formal report. Jim? Kristen, Kristen, do you have a, like an appendix where some of this stuff is, whether it's meeting notes or I'm just thinking about how reports are generated. It might make sense to have that be, you know, a sustainability appendix that starts out with that document and maybe is backed up by the meeting notes and then same with the design subcommittee that the appendix has that front and center and then is backed up by the meeting notes or something, just a suggestion, but rather than embed it in the actual report that it's a, a piece that's um, supportive of the report as an appendix item. Definitely, anything that's been provided to or by the um, subcommittees or, or um, building committee is, is in the appendices, minutes, agendas, um, things like that. And I, Jim, and Jim if I might. Please. Thank you. Um, I, I, I don't want anybody to misunderstand. Uh, we have said we are pausing the project and now we're discussing continuing dialogue with SMMA. Uh, so I think it's important to, to note publicly that uh, we will be discussing things that are already known, have already been generated by the full committee. And uh, we're, we're simply uh, ensuring that those uh, become uh, part and parcel of SMMA's continuing work. And it's not uh, uh, a situation where a subcommittee design or sustainability is generating new ideas, new information, new directions, new anything. Uh, yeah. Because a pause is a pause, but, yeah. uh, but good communication to reflect previous work is I think what we're talking about here. Would that be accurate way to- I, Yeah, I think it is. Remember, there are two comments there. The pause is as of the, production of the preliminary report. So there's a couple of weeks here where we'll, we'll be interacting. But after that, I think your comments are well taken. Thank you. And I see uh, this really as a documentation of, of where we are. Because normally the regular process is you move right into schematic and you don't necessarily have to write everything down, but I'm just worried that with time, some things might get lost or misinterpreted. So this really is just an idea to document kind of where we are at the end of feasibility so that as we move into SD, we can crack that open and be like, oh yeah, here's the, the things that, you know, we loved about option three, et cetera. Um, one other area I wanted to make some comment on, and I would, I'll ask Lori to comment on this. In terms of uh, our report, and Kristen, you can comment also, uh, normally there is a educational, uh, I guess strategy or philosophy that's embedded in a, in one of these reports. I don't know if it's in the feasibility report, but I know it's in the, it generally gets into the documents that this is the educational strategy curriculum that's driving the design of school. I know we have not totally completed that. Okay. Um, uh, but I, but I, but eventually I think we need some version of that to be either in this report or being considered in anticipation of being in this report. Uh, as a secondary issue to that, one thing that uh, I would like to see eventually uh, is a mapping of the elements of that strategy to the physical spaces in some fashion so mm -hmm. that we're able to answer questions related to uh, the, des the physical design of the components of the school related to that strategy. And uh, if, if, if both of you could comment on sort of where we are with that and and what would be in this report. Sure. So we know we've 
intended to do the educational visioning documentation. I think we've, we have done the conceptual work and we know what the vision is um, across all aspects of what the school would hopefully provide for us and what we've said to all of you in informing the design priorities. We need to document that and we were getting ready to strategize that when school closed. So unfortunately it slid off the priority list while we ironically, I have to say this part out loud, ironically have never before understood why school buildings are so important as we do right now. So um, we will document that. The timeline I'm targeting as I do all of the other work, um, certainly by July we'll have that for you. It's, it's not a heavy lift once we get our heads on it. The work is done, it just needs to be written down. The other document that you mentioned in terms of mapping out the room usage, we've been actively running that with Hill all throughout the design process. So we just need to connect with them in terms of also having that um, in a user-friendly piece right. that can go into the report. So both of those are not, a, not, the work is done, it's just the actual putting it to paper so that it's all aggregated and very friendly to the community. We understand how important communication, that vision to inform the design so the community can understand it in a one-stop shop document is critical to the, the next phases of this project, so. So the, the, what I just heard there is the actual uh, educational plan will probably be a little longer, right? That's, a, that's something you're gonna be working on Yes. When you get the big break of the summer this year. Right? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, the summer will allow for that to happen. And you know, we've definitely, and I've been part of projects with the MSBA document. It's very extensive. Um, so, and we'll do that work to break it out. I think it's worth the time to get to the layer of detail that's right. asked for there. Um, oh, well, you're just you're just sitting around waiting, uh, planning school, not knowing if it's going to open or it's going to yeah. be burning. Yeah, not, just in between be. that, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll make it happen. <laughs> uh, and the other part of it, did I did I hear that the other part of it might be near term? Is that? Yeah, we've been running all those percentage usage numbers with Hill all throughout all of this. So I imagine um, it wouldn't be, th that should be much quicker in terms of turning that around to the document that can be user friendly. We'll connect with them and talk on what that looks like, but we've definitely been having those conversations about how much the room is used. Right. Yeah. Because we, we one thing that will happen when we produce this report, it will be out there public and we'll yep. start to get questions about it and having that so we're able to understand and answer those questions would be great. Yeah, I, it's important this be a really positive communication tool for the vision of the middle school um, in right. teaching and learning and how the building will support that. So we, we understand that. Um, priority and are wanting to be sure that it is a very helpful document in that way. Great, thank you very much. Uh, that, those are those are my top line things. Uh, are any other questions from committee members relating to what will be in or what should be in that preliminary report? Um, I'm wondering if Kristen could just go over again for me so I fully understand kind of where the place of the gymnasium and the auditorium is or isn't in this in this report kind of just help me understand how it where it fits in in this at this point so the um, the primary the all of the alternatives and the preferred, the so-called preferred concept section will be documenting the 144,000 square foot scope. That scope includes only the cafetorium, no black box or auditorium, and it includes the 6,000 square foot gymnasium, not the two larger versions. But there is a section in the programming area that discusses the alternatives for those building options in detail with those um, documents that we distributed previously about what you might expect in those types of spaces, as well as the assumptions about the seating and uh, all of the room aspects. So those will just be recorded as what the difference is and what they are, and they will not be part of the floor plans or anything like that. Okay. Did that answer your question, Pat? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Okay. Uh, any other questions? 
Sorry, Tim, this is Matt. Just quickly, so the, the summary document that I sent you the other day, does that need to be in, introduced here? Does that get a pass along to SMMA? How does, how does that take its next step? Yeah, we just we just talked about that a little bit. Uh, I think it. I, I think that should be in the report. And they they talked about whether it's an appendix or whether it's embedded into the text or whatever. But uh, yeah, I no, believe it. Right. I guess that that's that's what I would offer as as my response to the discussion we just had. So, but I don't know how it makes it over to SMMA. I guess that's my question. Not, Does it need to be officially introduced within the full committee, or can it just get passed to SMMA? Uh, I think you can you can discuss it with them. They'll uh, you know incorporate it as they see fit, and then it'll be distributed as part of the preliminary report. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I I would uh, Kristen, could you just give us sort of where we are on the the costing issue, and the cost estimates issue. Where are we? Where do we stand right now? Sure, and um, and yep. So Andy's already switching over, and and Hill might want to lead this off. But um, we are, we have continued to refine the VE list and get updates on that, and we have also a revised estimate in progress that uh, absorbs some of those VE items, uh, like the reduced contingency and things that are um, already bought in and presented to all. Um, so we have that in the works. Um, we need to see where those fall to see um, if further refinement during feasibility is, is necessary. But in general, what we have discussed as a team is that we are committed to offering the 144,000 square foot scope um, based on what we know right now about the economy and about the uh, project scope at the $555 a square foot. So the cost estimate with all of the work that we've been doing in the VE log may not match up with that, but SMMA will prepare um, an, an approach and a memo that describes how we plan on getting there. So I don't know if Hill, you want okay, to go. Okay, if, if I restate that back at the, the base building, you believe the base building, it is, it is reasonable to produce the base building at the $555 per square foot, which has translated into approximately a $100 million uh, cost. That's, that's kind of what I heard. Is that, is that, that right? That's correct, yep. And and what we're um, what we're saying is that the, the the final estimate that we receive and and the work that you see here won't show that because we have done this you know, the estimate is from April and we've been doing a lot of this analysis um, but we would offer that during design what we'll be working with you all on is making sure that the design decisions made and the refinements made during design all work toward that $555 per square foot. So um, we, will, we would not be putting options on the table that would be in excess of that budget. Okay, any other, any other questions about cost right now? I just wanna follow up on that. Thank you, Kristen, for doing that. And I do believe that that's a place we can all get to. So I appreciate Sims and Hill working towards that. Uh, I just want to clarify that's hard cost, right? So then that number includes a soft cost for everything else on top of it that essentially um, would get us. So I just am doing the math on the hard cost, which is basically construction, contingency, design contingency, escalation, et cetera. That gets you just on uh, about 80 million ish, 79 and change. Um, and then there's soft costs on top of that that will get us, and usually those are. 25% or so, uh, right? So if we're all just following along, I just want to be clear that the 555 does not include soft costs. Um, it's- That is correct. Okay. And it is all, just, and those soft costs are built on the assumptions of escalation as we have them. And um, I think we will learn a lot too as the COVID um, issues unfold, what the impacts are to the economy. Right. 
I'm already getting questions from people. About yeah, yeah. <laughs> and none of and us how are the you answer. answering them? Okay. <laughs> it's too early to tell is my answer. I'm sorry. Right. I wish I had a better answer is how right. I'm answering them. But yeah. Um, so, okay. So just so everyone knows, that's the construction hard cost is the 555. And then there's soft costs, which include Sims and Hill it includes, um, you know, testing, et cetera. There's a number on top of that. So um, Mike, Mike or Andy or Mark um, just scrolled down so you can see where, yeah. And none of those numbers reflect the 555, just so everyone knows. And none of them reflect the base scope either. Um, this one starts with, uh, so we had our, our uh, column J there shows the original estimate. And yeah. then the column P includes enhanced sustainability. So there's really an in-between um, mm -hmm. where the 555 would lie in terms of construction costs with the BE items. Gotcha. Okay. Is that clear okay. to everyone? I understand it, but I just wanted to, for the sake of everyone else to know um, what the 555 includes and doesn't include. Now, one other item I would like to touch on because there is a report that uh, will be distributed to the members, which is a comparative analysis to, I think it's five or six other uh, projects, okay? Uh, and this will, as I understand it in my conversations with Hill and uh, at the MMA, this will not be part formally of the feasibility, but this analysis will be distributed to all of the committee members, is that correct? We, we can distribute that, yes, Tim. Yeah. Uh, so we're, 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 this is going to be refined in terms of the number that goes into Concord based on the work in the next couple of weeks. But you'll see the format here. It compares it to several other projects. Uh, sort of, it has to kind of normalize the cost in those projects for the time frame in which they were built. But it will it gives you ability to see our project versus seven other projects. So we're working on this also. Uh, this will be completed to be consistent with the cost that we have with the report, the 555 number. So we'll be able to see that across a, a range of several different projects. So, uh, but if that that is not in the feasibility report, but it's a it's another document that will be transmitted, as I understand it. Tim, no, sorry, of, sorry, sorry, Mike. Sorry. I just wanted to give you a heads up to check your cells, your formulas. It looks like Duxbury and Wachusett actual cost in twenty two might be off. Yeah, right. You would just pull up three ten and seven ninety two. Yeah, I, my assumption is all of this is going to get scrubbed down. And, yeah, and make, make okay. sure that it's right. Uh, yeah. Most important today, I just wanted to show people that we will have this information for all these all these projects. Yeah. Uh, just one other comment or one other question, I guess, for, and, and maybe this isn't something that, that can't be answered. Uh, going back to the previous sheet, Kristen was mentioning that the base is not including the enhanced sustainability, and I thought I've heard that the committee is wanting to include that as part of the base building, if you will. Uh, what, 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 what makes sense, to do, you guys can talk about that, but the I would like to see an alternative that has it in there. It can be next to the base alternative that doesn't have it in there, because so, I think that's actually good information also. But I would like to see the school with it in the base alternative with the sustainability in it also. If that's another column, that's another column. Does that make sense? That's fine. We can do whatever you want. That's fine. OK, OK. Kristen, does that make sense to you? Yes, yes. And that would be just more closely aligned with how we have the plans, the documentation, the and the cost estimate already set up. So that would be great for consistency. And, it, and I, I want to make sure our sustainability folks know that that in no way reflects the decision that we're not, we're not uh, uh, focused as a team on the aggressive sustainability. It's, uh, I, I think it, it is useful information to all of us to see uh, the building with Silver Lead and then the building with the way we want it to be in terms of the more aggressive sustainability. Well, I agree, Tim. I mean, people want to see the difference, the cost difference. Right. 
Okay, are, are there any other, uh, Kristen, the, the one other thing I want to touch on is schedule. Uh, and I know you've done some work on this and I think it, this is informative to the committee. If, uh, you know, what, what we're all really interested in is once we start up again, how long is it gonna take to get through schematic design? And I know that you've done a little work uh, related to when we gave you a, a guess at when uh, Springtown meeting will be mid April, when we would need to restart in order to be ready for that meeting. Not that this, that is the plan because one of the reasons we're pausing, we don't know what the plan is, but if we are lucky and, uh, and lucky in terms of the pandemic and we, we begin to see that we can do this, what is your estimate of the schedule and when we would need to start uh, in order to make the, be able to present an alternative to the town in that Springtown meeting? So um, we did do some very preliminary looking at the schedule and we are recommending that at the end of August or first week of September is when we restart or uh, launch into a schematic design. We have proposed uh, that that is a longer schematic design period than um, what was in our original proposal because we assume that there will be a public outreach process and that there will need to be some of that decision making and discussion on the uh, gym and auditorium in that early phase. So, so really the first months of after August 31st would be a deeper dive back into those programming options. Um, and and the community buy-in and then a decision around those so that we can then launch into schematic design and be ready for Springtown meeting. So right now we have cost estimating projected for uh, January into February and then a building committee approval in March of the schematic design uh, timed for your April town meeting. Um, and would that, with the schedule that you're talking about uh, potentially be part of the report or would it be? If, yes, yeah. we, can, we can definitely include that as, as a draft target schedule, understanding that like all of you and Lori has said, we don't know what's coming in terms of. Um, right, I, it all yeah. has to be couched with. Right. Uh, if we were able to start, if we were able to, if conditions allowed us to be able to foresee putting this on the spring town meeting ballot, should there be a spring town meeting, uh, we would have to start approximately September in order to exactly. achieve that. Yep. And this is what that would look like. Yeah. Any, any, I'm sure there might be. There's any questions on that part? All right, are there, are there any, other, any other comments related to the work that needs to be done to get us to the, to the preliminary feasibility report? All right, thank you. Uh, what else do we have to do? Uh, is there, uh, from communications, do we have any uh, specific correspondence that we want to acknowledge? I don't, I mean, I know we've gotten letters, Let's but see. I don't know. Yes, we've gotten a couple of Letters, nothing I'll go into detail about, but a couple of letters, another recently on the auditorium, um, another pretty detailed one on the gym options and ensuring that we look at revenue possibilities associated with each of those gym options as we're comparing. Um, let's see, those were the basic themes. Yeah. I don't think I'm missing anything. I'm sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't tracking, but I think that's it. That, that's that's right. my understanding as well. Okay. Yeah, and I had, I actually called the guy, the Concord Youth Basketball guy, and we had a, a very good, con good long conversation about what his, uh, what the pressures on, they, on them are for court space. And, and I talked about the alternatives and where we are and all that. And I think it was a good start of a conversation. You know, I think it, we may, we may want to consider getting a group of those guys, the soccer, the best softball together in the future so we can kind of collectively talk about the athletic needs. I think that would be a good discussion as well as we think forward, okay. Any other? I Go have ahead. one, if, 
If you don't mind, Tim. Uh, Lori, Kristen, and I had a call with the Institute for Human Centered Design a couple weeks ago, and I can't remember where in time <laughs> I am. It's a time warp. Uh, but I just wanted to, um, they're a, uh, I believe they're a nonprofit, but they're a, um, an accessibility slash universal design slash consultant uh, that works with different communities, whether it's plan review for accessibility, whether it's um, understanding how to implement uh, universal design in projects. So we had a great conversation uh, with them and have reached out to CPAC as a way of um, including them in the conversation and uh, having the Institute for Human Centered Design to some degree be involved in the project. And I just wanna let everyone know that with this pause, that won't be, uh, the intent is not to change that, just to um, potentially delay it as we are with everything else, but our intent is to continue that conversation. So I think it's important for everyone to know that we're, um, we're doing that. Okay, um, we're done. We don't can't. It's one of the, again our challenges. It's it's hard to have public comments in this. We don't we can't do it through the the Zoom process. So uh, with that, it, uh, I don't think there's any new business through the community. Oh, one thing I will I forgot to mention this. We will this afternoon at the selectmen's meeting. Uh, there's an item on the their agenda about our pause. So I will be. I, I think a, a, a few of us will be on that call and we will be talking with the selectmen about the decision we made this morning. So that will happen this afternoon at four o'clock. So that, that'll happen. Uh, hey, Tim. Yep. It's Stephen Crane. I, I, I have to jump off, but I just wanted to just say before we, uh, before we head to adjourn, um, in, in listening to Kristen's comments about reopening um, or, or re resuming design and going into SD, uh, you know, it'll be probably the second week of September before we have our collections completed locally and, and, no, and our town meeting is set. So uh, I guess when I heard, heard late August, early September, um, that may require a little bit of extra time to make sure we know what the, we could do another comprehensive, you know, financial analysis of where we are. So just wanted to throw that out. Hopefully we can do it sooner than later, but I just want to yeah. caution against I guess, uh, you know, we'll, we'll need data to inform that. Right. Well taken, so. point well taken. I, what I'm most, one of the things I'm most interested about that schedule is it to, it'll give people a feeling of how long it will take from start to finish for schematic design whenever we restart. So we had to, we were kind of using that as an example in some cases. So it, mm -hmm. it may be an optimistic example, but hopefully, hopefully not. And your, your point, we have to really have some financial data to have some good understanding of that as well taken yeah. uh, thanks tim and uh, I'll, I'll take care guys and i'm really glad we're not having you 7 30 meetings for a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> see ya right. bye uh with that yeah. I, I think go ahead Who? uh this is dean banfield i just have a public comment yes um yeah the schedule that would start uh restart the process in early september does that take into account the fact that the warrant would close early january you, you have a multi-month process of public hearings on the warrant, et cetera, before we get to our April town meeting. So I'm just trying to understand whether or not that's accommodating the basic structure of town meeting. Uh, right now, if you can tell me the basic structure of town meeting in terms of the pandemic, it would be interesting. The, uh, it's, it's really an example. It's not you know we're not saying no that's that that, that's 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 not what i'm the point i'm making in other words if you were to restart the process how many months would it take to get the schematic the schematic design completed because you need the you need the warrant article you want to move on the warrant which will close early january usually the first week of january so if you're not done with your schematic design by early january then the t you're not ready for the town meeting. That's all. It won't be right. on the you can't get it on the warrant. Right. Can, um, Tim, if I may, I think the warrant language, and I think Stephen had to leave, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is the warrant language um, is generic in the sense we actually talked about it if we were going to have done fall town meeting this year. 
that the warrant language would, would have been out there, I want to say it was in August or something ahead of um, right. the fall town meeting. So that the warrant language is fairly generic in what it's asking. It's not specific um, to, yeah. so I... God, if I can step in or speak in, I, I think you're exactly right there. Um, I, I think the, the original schedule we had for the fall meeting had about a five month duration for the schematic design. When Kristen mentioned that we were extending that by one month, we had the warrant in, 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 in going to you know, public, public uh, advancement of the, the estimate numbers and everything so that it was well in advance of the meeting. So I think uh, by giving ourselves the five months that we originally had plus the additional month, uh, we should be able to accommodate all those requirements. A uh, big picture, we're, we're absolutely uh, committed to following what the necessary guidelines are for being on the warrant and what, what, the, what the required language is, uh, and also committed to doing the right due diligence with all of the committees and, uh, that need to see this and have hearings on it before it's done. Uh, this is all hypothetical. We don't, we don't know that it's going to be this spring. Uh, and it's sort of a preliminary, uh, what I was interested in most is the preliminary uh, indication of what, how we could get the work done. Now, obviously that has to be mapped over the set of specific requirements that, uh, that may be traditional or may be modified by the town related to the conditions at the time, but uh, we would certainly do that. So the traditional hearing schedule, would, so public hearings would be conducted in mid to late February, generally, sometimes. This year we had a very late set of hearings that drifted into March um, for an April town meeting, but the meeting itself was the last week of April. So usually okay. those hearings would be conducted. You'd have to have hard numbers, you'd have to be able to defend them and, and the design would be you know, you know, available for distribution to the public for their comment in sometime in February. That's the traditional town meeting schedule if we're having okay. an April town. Okay, well, that's, no, I, I didn't know whether the September start date would, you know, flow with that, that's all. Yeah, we'll have to take a look at that. And I, I, I think it's, uh, I thank you for bringing it up. I mean, there's, <laughs> I'm sure there are many details like that that we would have to, as when we get serious about that schedule, have to incorporate into it. Okay, thank you. Any other comment? Well, thank Damn you it. all very, thank it's you all very much. Uh, go ahead, yes. Sorry, um, am I understanding correctly that for this coming town meeting in September, that the school committee or the middle school building committee will not be presenting anything for a vote for this coming September? No. That is correct. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, that, 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 the, 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 pause, the, the pause that we're undertaking uh, sort of precludes that. We wouldn't be ready for, for the September meeting. <laughs> Uh, anything else? All right, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. This was a this was a uh, a good interaction. I appreciate all of your uh, your involvement today and your your indulgence with this process. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, too. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone. Be safe. Yeah, stay safe, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.